Hi, this is John Doe. I'm back again, guys, for another commentary. So the year is 1946. Today I'm checking out It's a Wonderful Life, directed by Frank Capra. So if you have a copy of this Christmas classic and you'd like to sync up my full film commentary, please set the film timestamp to zero, have the film on pause, also put in your subtitles as well, and I'll give you a countdown in five Five, four, three, two, one, hit play. Liberty Films, we're in black and white. Yeah, just to note guys, I've done well over a hundred commentaries now. This is probably the earliest movie I've done, yeah, 1946. Maybe that's something I'll look into. So it's a wonderful life. Just for sinking purposes, I'll read out what I can see on screen. Starring James Stewart's just appeared. And Donna Reed, Lionel Barrymore, Thomas Mitchell and Henry Travers. And a list of other names. It's a long list. Wow. I'm not going to say this film feels dated. How could you say such a thing? It's very much of its time, though. I mean, it's, uh, for me, it's the greatest Christmas movie ever made. So just to redeem myself, I've I've labelled it as number one of all time Christmas movie. Yeah, it's hard to look beyond this. I think it's more so for, like, so produced, directed by Frank Capra, just for, like, thematic content throughout. It's a wonderful, or excuse the pun, it's a wonderful movie. You are now in Bedford Falls. And it's snowing. Oh, it's very somber. Ooh. Gower drug. Oh, he owes everything to George Bailey. Martin. Martin Miss. Is that the local bar? Help, help, Bailey. He's taking a turn for the worse. Help him, son. Ah, oh, George is a good guy. He's just lost his way. Lovely aerial shot of light. Oh, please, God. Yeah, it's like the... Is it the home? The Bailey household? I pull out wide. We're in the outer regions of space. Ow. Is it God and his angels and his minions? Joseph. we got another, another man despairing. It's Christmas. He's thinking about topping himself. Shit. Send somebody in. Is it Clarence? <laughs> so Henry Travers playing the character of Clarence. Very, very memorable. He's not in the film a great deal, but yeah, he certainly stands out in a good way. Not in a really like annoying way. Here he is. It's very like, uh, Clarence is very like wide eyed, effervescent, you know, gets the job done. Means well, hearts in the right, probably the perfect foil for like Bailey and his dilemma to send in Clarence, you know. So, I see 1946. One thing I've always felt in regards to, like, It's a Wonderful Life, I find the ideas throughout quite far-reaching. If you consider what year this was made, like 1946, I think it's a pretty daring, dynamic concept, concepts throughout, you know, and I really admire Frank Capra, considering the limitations back then in, regarding what, in regards to, like, technology and what they were able to do with, like, film at that early because film was still in fairly early stages where right? we've not even transitioned into like color you know certain filmic techniques still being invented back in the 40s so yeah for me so this is young george bailey with the boys a sleigh so they're sliding along the ice fucking hell where are his fucking parents to Place your bets. Which fucking kid's going to get submerged in the fucking ice? 
Merry Christmas. Let's fuck ourselves up in the ice. With no parents to be seen. Oh, yeah. Extend your ears. Oh, Harry Bailey's not scared. Yes, son. Ha, ha, ha. So the younger brother falls in, doesn't he? Fucking dickhead, he went long. Don't go long, Harry. Fuck me. Here's George. Oh, I'll save my brother. That's all right. <laughs> Hypothermia, what's that? <laughs> Fucking hell, boys. Yeah, he lost hearing in uh, so left or right ear. I'm not really paying attention right now, am I? Oh, Mr. Potter, it's the giant fucking toad, the leech of the fucking neighborhood. Potter collects everyone and everything. He wants to take all the fucking money. Big Christmas feast, fat fuck. Oh, nice. So George has got an ad 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 admirer. Hot dog. I wish I had a million. A oh, million dollars back then. Fuck me, that's like the... Equivalent of a billion dollars nowadays. Oh, this guy's got a drinking problem. Oh, it's George. Even at such a young age, he's got many female admirers. I like it. I'm still thinking about you. Oh, yeah, you slag. <laughs> Help you down, love. I'm 10 years old. I'm not getting sexual thoughts as of yet. So, am I right in saying, so this is obviously, is this Mary Hatch? As a young girl. So even at this age, old George Bailey, very sort of, uh, he's got big aspirations in life, you know. He's been nominated for membership in the National... Yeah, it's the left ear, he can't hear her. Oh, she loves him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think this young boy's well cast as young Bailey. Oh, look. Oh, yeah. You my manager, you pisshead. Oh, he looks fucking crippled. I'm going to send a fucking angel in for this guy. He looks like he's on the fucking brink. Oh, is it a notice? Uh, oh, his son's died. Shit. Robert's dead. Oh, I didn't realise, boss. So George is going to attempt to comfort him. Good luck. So Mr. Gower. Oh, he's dropped his pills. Fuck me, Gower. You, you seem on the edge, son. Do you want me to ring in a fucking angel for you, mate? He's on the brink. He's done and dust. There's his dead son. Poison. Oh, did he poison him? <laughs> Only joking, guys. Nice staging. All within one shot. So this is very much old school Hollywood filmmaking. Lots of sets. Oh, yeah, mate. It's nice, you can already immediately pick up on what's sort of motivating his anger, you know. So I kind of like it. Fantastic storytelling from old Frank Capra. So Bailey, Building and Loan Association. Fuck you now. If I'm George Bailey at this... Why is everybody on fucking edge? What's going on in this town? Everyone's fucking wired up, aren't they? Oh, it's the bank examiner. Has he come to fucking collect?
Oh yeah, it's the fucking toads having it out with my pops. Oh, is this the dickhead? Fuck you, Mr. Potter. Mr. Potter ate all the fucking pies. He can barely fucking move, he's that fucking fat. I'm not judging. I'm not judging overweight people, but this Potter prick. Ah, what would you know about charity Potter coming out of your fucking lips, mate? He don't do families and Ebenezer Scrooge. Wannabe. Yeah, yeah, fuck off, Potter. I'm gonna touch you. Yeah, get out of here soon. Fuck you. The father's so not. Oh, that's all right, son. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> He's getting his ass handed to him. So even at a young age, George Bailey was willing to stand up to Potter. I love it. God, this guy can barely form sentences. Fuck me, man. How are you running a business, mate? It's basically George is running the business for him and he's like 10 years old. Capsules? What are you grabbing me, mate? I can't understand you. Oh, fucking hell, mate. Ooh. Slapping severe. That is ears bleeding. Fuck me. I'm going to call my fucking... This is fucking assault. You double my fucking wages if you're going to beat the shit out of me, boss. Oh, you're upset, yeah? Want me to send an angel in for you, mate? Oh, there it is. There's the evidence, you dickhead. You bloodied my ear. Ah, oh, unfortunate accident. Oh, maybe this guy should just take some poison and end himself. Oh, I'm sorry, mate. It was the bottle. Oh, well, let's hug it out. Fucking assault, baby. I do feel sorry for this cat. I'm only joking, guys. Yeah, it's it's really cool storytelling. Beautifully acted. So we're jumping forward. So here's George Bailey, all grown up. So this is old Jimmy Stewart, James Stewart. Iconic, legendary American actor. Nice freeze frame. So I kind of like the seamless transition between Bailey as a youngster to like adulthood. There's no like, it's just, it's just cuts forward. There's no like titles or anything on screen to say that we've let forward in time. So I kind of like it, you know, sort of trusting the audience. Ah, oh, Thousand and One Nights. Where are you going to, mate? Sahara fucking desert? Arabian Nights with your fucking gown on, yeah? I got a nice second-hand uh, suitcase, Bailey. <laughs> no charge. Everybody loves you. Hot dog. Hot dog. George Bailey, custom made. I love it. So you can already pick on the f up on the fact that he's well-respected within the uh, neighbourhood. James Stewart is an absolute treasure, isn't he? You think of, like, all-time great American good guy actors. I mean, Jimmy Stewart's arguably number one. You'd be putting old Tom Hanks up there. There's always... I always feel there's a hot dog. Oh, Bailey's waving. He's leaving. Everybody's out in attendance. We love George Bailey. Yeah, for me, Tom Hanks, modern day actors, he's probably the closest thing to like Jimmy Stewart. Not that they would ever consider remaking this movie, and it's probably a little bit too late now in regards to like Hanks. Ah, oh, God, probably. Had... Oh, yeah. It's... Is it that blonde bit of ass? The young girl from earlier? She's all grown up. Oh, yeah, you a fucking one of Poundland Mal 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 Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Poundland style. Yeah, just going back to Tom Hanks, if they were ever to, I don't think they would ever consider remaking It's a Wonderful Life. And I think Hanks is arguably probably a little bit too old now in regards to playing the part of George Bailey. Not that he would be up for the part, but he would be my choice, sort of. How old is Hanks? He's probably in his 50s or 60s, isn't he? I mean, I'm not entirely sure. James Stewart, how old is he here? 
in this movie, maybe in his 30s. You'd be looking at Hanks in his 30s. If they, It's never going to happen, though, but that would have been my choice, you know. Come on, George. Come downstairs. Mass fucking gathering. Family style. Ah, uh, yes. So, as it stands, George Bailey... Enjoying life, killing it at life. All, all's good in the world, but it's soon going to take a turn. That's what I really like about one screenwriting, plot developments, character developments. Um, it's all totally believable in regards to like Bailey's sort of slow downward spiral towards uh, basically the darkest. Um, possibility of them all i.e suicide but we're going to get into it how's that cupcake potter he's a fucking toad pops can't we get him fucking ended i'll put the fucking hit out of him i know some guys from the city some mafia guys we'll get fucking get the toad fucking wiped out we'll time it we'll get it done at christmas everyone will be loving it <laughs> so that's his brother there, isn't it? Is that the brother he saved? Oh, it's Mary there. Not one drop of the liquor, baby. Oh, fucking... Is this... No, I'm not going to bring out racism. But they've got a black maid. That's all I'm saying. It's the 1940s, they got a black maid. Are they, hopefully they're fucking paying her well, you know? One thing I will say though, this is the fucking Bailey household. If anyone's doing it right, it's these schmucks. So they're, she's probably being looked after. So I'm not judging, but... That's of course saying you were born older. Yeah, totally believe that. He's got big ideas and aspirations, you know. He certainly can't hang around in a small town like this. Not being judgmental, but it's it's what it is, you know. When you've got big ideas, you're going to go out into the world. Yeah, so Pops wants him to work for the building and loan. The maid's looking on. It's like, come on, it's your fucking father. Do the right thing. Yeah, she's. I like the maid. Oh, what, man? Shabby office. That's our office. That's our fucking business. The way George just worded that, though, he's not saying it in a bad way. Oh, it's just it's what it is, you know? And the father figure's so right, you know? They're contributing so much to the town, you know? And you feel they have an important part to play, especially considering oh, Mr. Potter is trying to claim, collect sort of fucking everything, can he? Bust. You imagine the father. Yeah, you go out there, son. You make something of your life, you know. Or does George hang around and fight the real fight? You know, he's definitely the guy to stop Potter, you know. He's got youthfulness, he's smart. Yeah, I like the maid. Yeah, she's clearly being looked after. She's clearly one she enjoys her job, you know. She's outspoken. She's happy. Got a lot of respect for uh, Pops Bailey. Ah, uh, class of 1928. The fuck? <laughs> oh, we're going to have a class of 1920. I'm getting confused now because this is 1946. Oh, was it set? Yeah. God, that's a weird, like, quirky sensibilities back then. Hot dog. What the fuck, man? 
Yeah, times have very much changed, haven't they? So we're going to get a wonderful reveal in a moment of old Mary Hatch. So Donna Reed. Yeah, Donna Reed is just, wow. Stunning. What more can I say about her? She's fabulous in this film as well. So I put a pull under the floor. Oh, just warn me when you decide to uh, trigger it. This is fucking so Poundland Mar 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 can't fucking say Marilyn. Marilyn Monroe's back, Poundland style. Everybody wants to shake George Bailey's hand. Kid sister, she's all grown up now. It's an absolute stunner. She's a fire fucking cracker. Look at her. Just dance with her. Yeah, we watch George's reaction here. Here we go. Wow. Look at Donna Reed here. That's wonderful, man. That's film acting right there. Gosh, she's radiant, man. You can tell she's got a thing for George. She's not breaking eye contact. Wide, smiling. Nice, and he's going straight in. Nice little dance. Oh. Well, hello, Mary. You've all grown up. So how long has it been, then, since they... Yeah, I just saw a passage at all. They're going to fire at the fucking swimming pool. Oh, it's the Charleston Dance Contest. Wow, some old school dancing. Charleston style, baby. It's all in the legs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, have we got a dance? Fuck. Takes two to tango, baby. Let's go. Oh, yes, Mary. <laughs> yeah, look at my legs. <laughs> yeah, man. That's awesome. James Stewart's fucking great. Nice coverage here from Capra. A little bit of editing, but a lot of the shots are just playing out. That's what I enjoy about these older movies. Um, a shot... Oh, yeah, James Stewart sliding his fucking knees about... Oh, yes, left to right, left to right. Yeah, just going back to, like, old school movies. Um, what you find, a lot of shots tend to, like, linger for a little bit longer on screen. So I kind of like it. You're sort of able to process things a little bit better. Uh, nowadays, movies are so, like, hyperactive, you know. Yeah, they're going to fire at the swimming pool and they're not going to warn them. Hoodlums. Oh, yes. Here we go. So the runway's moving. That's just a bit cheesy, look. George and Mary don't realise. Oh, look how close they're getting to the edge. Oh, they dare not fall one in. Oh. Must be good. You're about to take a tumble, Mr. Bailey. Oh, in the water. They're all jumping in now. Look at this twat. Look. Oh, George is still dancing in the water with Mary. Wonderful. Oh, for fuck's sake. It's a throw-throw. Everyone's jumping in. It's a roaring success. No, these fucking idiots are jumping in. Fucking hell, man. <laughs> Look at this idiot. Oh, yeah, I'm going to jump in. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> So 1940s and out of the sound effects. Ah, oh, George is about to lasso, lasso the moon. Yeah, so the chemistry between these two is already off the scale. It's fabulous, isn't it? 
Hot dog. <laughs> what does hot dog mean back there? Is that like roar is a success? Excelling. Positivity. Hot dog. Killing it. So I'm assuming Mary's got nothing on underneath her fucking robe. 18, my ass, love. You look like you're in your late 20s. You're too young, love. Just tell me your real age. 18, my ass. He accidentally steps on the... Yeah, rope. Your caboose. Oh, thank you, Mary. Oh, he's moving in. Oh, she's playing hard to get. She definitely wants him to kiss him, but it's all about timing, isn't it? So the old house needs a lick of paint. So Mary's longing for this property, discarded property. Ah, oh, let's smash some windows. Good shot, Bailey. Oh, this guy looking on, it's hilarious. Are you gonna kiss the girl? <laughs> yeah, so George has got big ideas, aspirations. Not sort of planning out his life, but he's thinking big, isn't he? <laughs> So he's very, like, career-minded. He's not thinking about romance right now. And obviously, Mary's, like, the opposite. She's looking to, like, not settle down, but meet that special someone. Good shot. Two out of two. To be with George. You ain't going to tell him. Oh, yes. Ah, oh, the moon. Look at this guy looking on. <laughs> You're going to lasso the moon. Nice. Swallow the moon. Do you think it fit in my mouth, George? What am I turning into? Some moon goddess. Bathed in light. Kiss her, mate. Why are you looking on? Getting a good fucking gander. <laughs> oh, your romance is wasted on the fucking youth. He's right. But, again, why are you fucking watching, mate? Get inside. I'm assuming you're married. Oh. She's naked. She's lost her gown. And she's in the fucking shrubs. Oh no. Don't worry guys. It's 1946. Well it's not, not worry. It's a disappointment. We're not going to get any nudity in this film. It's Oh, Bailey's like, I'm in a position of power here. I can negotiate my way out of this. Uh, Mary, you're completely butt naked, right? Don't we uh, come to some sort of agreement, eh? <laughs> yeah, James Stewart's fucking great, isn't he? <laughs> She would agree with me. Everybody's on George's side. <laughs> Sell tickets. Oh, shit. 
Turn for the worst. Have your road back, Mary. Music's ominous. Oh, father's had a stroke because of the fucking toad, Potter. You prick. Prick-ass Potter's fucked up my fucking dad. Let's get him. Mary's looking on. Nice. Music's wonderful. She's very caring, isn't she, Mary? It's a Bailey, bros. So is the father dead? I can't remember. Ah, oh, so he didn't go to Europe. He got sort out of the paperwork. Oh, Potter. So dad's dead. Potter is looking to fucking take it. Oh, look at him. He wants... Oh, he wants to dissolve it. Munch it up. Chomp, chomp, Potter. Yeah. Fucking hell, Potter. You can... As he's like fucking... I'm not sure regarding timelines, how long has it been since a daddy died, but yeah, Potter's moving in, isn't he? He ain't fucking about. What would you know about the public, Potter? I wonder if you'd done anything good for this fucking town. Oh yeah, you're so caring, Potter. Oh yeah, Potter, all you got in your fucking eyes is fucking dollar signs, baby. Yeah, what's wrong with that? So George is about to speak up. Yeah, what's friends? Do you do you have any friends, Potter? Fucking hell. I gotta say the actor playing Potter is wonderful, Lionel Barrymore. I mean you really hate him throughout this movie, but um it's fabulous acting and writing. Come on, George. Starts. You got. You need to step up to Potter. He's talking way too much here. That's it. Here comes Bailey. Here comes George. Not a business man, but doing good for like the community. You know, take away the building and loan. There's got a lot of people struggling. You know. It's a nice argument, isn't it? Or is it business, personal gain for yourself? Or are you going to maybe not make as much money but help the community? You know? Oh, yeah, Potter's yawning. Yeah. You're sat in your fucking ivory tower, mate, doing jack shit. Counting your yeah, tell him, give it to him, George. Yeah, cattle, ain't it? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, put a building alone, son. You prick. Yeah, George is like it's a bit of back and forth. It's sort of internalizing. He's like, look. He wants to get out, but he's he's away. I oh, probably need to stay and fight this fight, you know? Very sort of torn right now. Sentimental hogwash at Christmas. Blah, 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 blah. Potter, fat fuck. So George is literally on the brink of leaving. What is that on the fucking desk? Is it a fucking black raven? You know, the ravens, the black ravens turned up. God knows what it's doing in here. It's a pet, I guess. Oh, 
As long as it's this if he stays, isn't it? Look. Nice shot coming up here. I think this is a shot coming up. Nah, he's like, he needs to, look, if I don't leave now, I'll never leave. Here we go. Right to the camera. Come in. Nice. Classic Frank Capra. Character comes up to the lens and like, just not frozen, but a, a, a moment of realisation. So, yeah, four years have passed and he ain't got out of bed for false. It is what it is, you know. He could never leave, man. He's got to fight the fight, especially for his uh, long-gone father, you know. Oh, yes, matey. Ah, uh, is this bro, brother's back? Is he married? So I think the brother's come back. Has he been fighting in the war, if I recall? Oh, Ruth. Oh, Ruth Dakin Bailey, baby. Why? Fuck me. Fucking hell, my brother's all grown up. Oh, yes. Welcome to the family. <laughs> Guess communication... A lot harder back there. A little bit limited, isn't it? Not as if we've got, like, mobile phones or... Internet's not even a thing <laughs> back in the 40s or 20s. Assuming that's when the film's set. 28, wasn't it? So what are we, 1932? So what's on George's mind here? It's definitely deep in thought. Ah, oh, some popcorn. <laughs> Best popcorn. So, a job in Buffalo. Is George a little bit jealous? It's like, oh, I need to fucking get out. Four years have passed, you know. So a big photograph's been taken. Oh yes, mate, you're not drunk. <laughs> so I forget what happens here. What is it? It's just is it this guy who fucks up? Does he miss a payment or so? And Potter, like, comes to collect and then it's just super fast spiralling. Triggers George on a downward spiral and some. Ha 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 ha. So it's all good. So this guy's fucking smashed. Nice, and it? It's all off camera. Oh, some nice 1930s music. So he's still single, George. It's definitely something on his mind right now. I'm not entirely sure what it is. Thinking about his brother or the fact that he ain't got out. Oh, you're getting that, hearing the sounds of travel and thinking, oh, it's life passing me by. He's got these big notions that he's going to better himself by leaving the town and Come the end of the movie, you get the realisation that he, he never needed to leave. He had everything there, but he needed to go through it all to figure it out, you know? The mother character's wonderful, I've got to say. But 
she realised it's like, George, Sonny, you need to get a lady in your life. Yeah, Mary Hatch. The mother's not fucking stupid. She realises Mary's the one. Nice girl. Can help you figure out shit, George. Yeah. Answers. An emotional cushion in life, and they're the best kind of answers. Ah, That's what a woman can do, you know? Give you a structure and a purpose. Because when you're facing the ills of the world, it's good to come home to somebody else, you know? Yeah, just give her a call. What's the thing with... I would say George is, like, proud. He's very, like, single mind. Again, he's still, like, career-minded, isn't he? That's all he's thinking about, so... So, I ain't got time for romance. He's literally just staring him right in the face, though. Ah, necking. (laughs) It's the other way, mate. So are we two? Haha, <laughs> Coca-Cola. Nice look here from Jimmy Stewart. I love that shot. Oh, it's this fucking Marilyn Monroe. Poundland stars back. Ah, oh, it's safe to see George Bailey. You can see this trollop for what she is. <laughs> fucking hell, you play the field, love. I ain't interested in you, you know. Oh, yes. Oh, no, a thing. <laughs> See, our sensibilities aren't the same. She just wants to get propped up in a fucking bar and get forever less than jolly. Yeah, she's really not into the finer things in life, so not a good fit for George Bailey, I've got to say. Where's Mary to? I go and find Mary, baby. Oh, how do you... Yeah, you can't be out in the elements. Fuck me. Ha, 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 ha. So without even realising, he's not... Oh, yes. Mary... Sort of lingering outside our house. Oh, I happen to be passing, George. You're not stalking the girl, are you? <sighs> Fucking hell, his mother's even cued him in. Fuck me. Yeah, he's a little bit too proud right now. Don't know if, it's, uh, if men really can play hard to get, but he's like, Mary's shown all the signs that she's interested in him, and George can't see for the sun right now. Oh, she's even going to put the music on. God, she's been thinking about him. A lasso of the moon, baby. So where are we at with the Bailey character right now? He's a little bit on edge, isn't he? A lot of frustration at play. And you're seeing it here in the performance, you know? He's a little bit snappy, isn't he? Yeah, he's very blunt with Mary here, I've got to say. Oh, 
Oh, fuck me, George. You, God, you don't like the place you live in, do you, son? Fuck me. I'll sit down. I can't do that, love. <laughs> I'm too busy despairing, baby. It's right in front of you, George. It's like you can't even read it. That's you, mate. Oh, you fucking muppet. As I said, he's got a lot on his mind. And Mary's trying to pierce his cold exterior. Look, stalemate between these two. She's so sweet. Look at him. Oh, what are you fucking singing to me, love? Oh, yeah, all right. Hey ho. Oh, great stopover, George. Oh, you really know how to woo a woman, mate, don't you? Peach. <laughs> it's the whole idea of settling down in bed for fools. He's not having it. Their mother character's funny, Ella. <laughs> yeah, you give it to him, Ma. George doesn't know what he wants. I'll see you again in four years, Mary, yeah? <laughs> oh, Sam Wainwright. So the mother's already queuing in the guy she'd like her daughter to get married to, and it ain't fucking George Bailey. Mary's gonna... F I like it, Mary's standing up to him. Fuck you, George. Nice moment, yeah. He's gonna smash it. Fuck me, man. Oh, she's trying to make him feel jealous. Look. Yeah, she's turning the screw on old George, and he can re he knows. He's too lost in his own thoughts right now. Nice moment coming up here. They're both sort of listening in. So this is Sam. Fuck me, Sam. You working for the fucking Mafia? Not that George can see any of this. What the fuck, man? I like this. Look. Oh, Mary just wants to get up close and personal, George. Look. Great stuff, this. Yeah, nice, isn't it? Can you imagine if they were to cover this nowadays, 2022 version of It's a Wonderful Life? They, they wouldn't have any of this like subtlety in like the acting, you know? It's all unspoken. I know George is talking on the phone, but the way they're sort of like gazing back and forth at each other, yeah, they just handle this in a different way. Right now, nowadays, you know, they lose all of the magic, you know. Barely listening to the uh, phone call. <laughs> what were you saying, Sam? I'm intoxicated by Mary's fucking perfume. Can't stop looking at her. Christ, George, you're going to do anything about this? Could the signs be any more blatant, mate? I'll oh, just cut the fucking feed. I'm here, Sam. Hang up.
Oh, it's the chance of a lifetime. Oh, George. Oh, look. Oh, yeah. Poor old Mary. She's getting emotional, man. What are you doing? Oh, he's going to hug it out. Ooh. Nice, nice. Oh, the kissing. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Oh, the mother just can't look. Oh, shit. Nice. Finally. Kiss and tell. And they're getting married. Yeah, wonderful, this. Finally. Fuck me, George. You took your sweet-ass time, son. So it's all good right now. Life's pretty sweet, George. Yeah, it's quite interesting, the uh, overall like film length and structure to this movie. I mean, it's probably a good, like, we're almost coming up to an hour. It's probably a good, like, hour and a half before we start getting towards really, like, dark stuff. So, it's quite a longish sort of opening Bedford Falls segment, George doing his thing, you know? So definitely, if they were ever to remake this movie, and I don't think they ever will, I think they would... Um, I think the film would end up being a lot shorter. They'd probably easily cut, like, 30 minutes out of it. I think you probably... I'm not saying the film's over long, but you can certainly shorten a lot of these earlier sequences, I've got to say. Because really, all we've had, like, last 20 minutes is... It's not like George lingering around Bedford Fall. He just seems like a fucking lost lamb, doesn't he? Finally, he's with Mary. Potter's Potter's doing his thing, but he's really in the shadows. So this... Yeah, things are just sort of tickling over. So finally, as I was talking regarding the narrative, so now we're going to get some action, you know? Yeah, I kind of feel like they could have sped up uh, Potter's real intentions a lot sooner. But it is what it is. It's fine. It's This film's still a fucking masterpiece, you know. All I'm really... I'm kind of ass assessing this from the aspect of it being like the year 2022 in terms of like pacing, you know. I think a lot of people would probably flag this with regarding It's a Wonderful Life that maybe it's a little bit too long in the earlier part of the movie. So what's going on, George? Come on, you gotta fry this fucking toad. Fuck Potter up. So they're all moving in. It's this fucking crow, Raven, Birdie. Oh, this guy's fucked up, isn't he? Uncle Billy, he's hitting the fucking bottle. What's going on? Shit. Anyone listening to my commentary, I'm just having a little swig of water, guys, if you can hear me gurgling, I'll be pretty quiet. Oh, what's happened, mate? He's misplaced something, hasn't he? So it's all the cash. So somebody's on the blower. Oh, it's pretty ominous. So it's fucking raining outside. Oh, is it fucking Potter? Oh, yeah. Post Potter's in his fucking pristine fucking domain. No expense spared. He even got a fucking photograph of himself to the left. What a prick. Oh, Potter, I'm going to chop her in a fucking coffin for you later. So I'm going to fucking end you, mate. I'm going all out to kill your fucking ass, Potter. Hang up, Bailey. Hang up. Shit. He's come to collect, and he? he ain't fucking about.
Yeah, anything. He wants to claim the entire fucking... It's basically claiming the soul of the fucking town. I said, George, you keep looking back at the picture of your father. Remind yourself about doing the right thing, isn't it? Help the people. So I like this. George is like, he's ready for a fight. And he's got the brains to stand up to Potter. Here we go. Shit. So whether or not the people are wanting to play ball. Oh, sirens outside. Oh, shit. Black and white. Sirens. I'll skull. Yeah, nice this from the townsfolk. What about this uh, Bailey Associates? So it's equity, it's collective equity, I guess. All for one, one for all. Oh, this fucking guy wants his money, fine. He wants it now. Oh, word spreading about Potter. I.e. if they sell up, they'll get the payment. Not realising, though, long term, Potter's going to fucking screw them all. Oh, see, he's fucking... Okay, they're going to lose a few here. Damage limitations, Jassy George, you step in, son. Hey, Randall, come on, baby. How long have we known each other? It tear the fucking town apart, aren't it? Basically, it's the equivalent of Biff Tannen taking over and back to the future. That's what Potter would be far, be up in his fucking skyscraper penthouse looking down on all of these fucking minions. You know, absolute devastation. Doing the right thing, trying to reason with him. Got to stick together, though. Uh, getting desperate. I can help each other. It's about... Oh, Mary's got some money. Ah, oh, man. She's a godsend, isn't she? Well done, Mary. So I got 2,000. You're not having the entire amount, mate. Fuck me, I'll tell this guy to fucking leave right now. Twat. Uh, 150, how's that sound, mate? Ah, smile like it, son. Twenty. It's ah, oh, it's all good, love. <laughs> what a great moment! Uh countdown. It's looking good. I live to su I live to survive. Survive living, surviving another day. <laughs> Financial wizards. More like thinking on your feet. Very good though. Christ, is that, that's all they've got left. Jesus, man. But at least they've kept their clientele for now. So right here, right now, George Bailey's in a really good place. Oh, what's going on? Mary's gone home. It's 
So this fucking... That's your wife, mate. <laughs> What's the deal with this fucking raven crow? It's definitely a pet of some kind. Oh, it's the home. It's the home she's been dreaming of. Yeah, so what more can you say about Mary, man? Oh, God, man. It's like your dream wife, isn't it, basically? It's just fucking wonderful, man. Yeah, I'd have to say um, Donna Reed as Mary Hatch. She's probably one of my favourite sort of like or leading lady performances in cinema. I think she's fucking great, man. So I've got it all set up. So Mary's making the best of it. I fucking love it, man. Bit of a sort of makeshift arrangement, but it's still a lot of magic at play, you know? And if George can't appreciate the, the bridal suite, ah, this is awesome. Definitely got the magic at cinema. Magic of cinema at play at fairy tale aspect, black and white, classical music. Yes, yeah, look at Mary. Yeah. Ah, oh, don't worry, a little bit of leakage, it's fine. <laughs> oh, hell, man. What is this hellhole? <laughs> Mary's like, what, you not like, hubby? <laughs> you not like my new home? You're no dicks? Oh, fuck, you know, my wife. Oh, she makes the best of everything. So that's everything George loves, in it? Champagne, candles, food. Wonderful, isn't it? And some firelight. Toasting a pig. Pig on a stick. Or is it some chicken? That's like chicken, doesn't it? Look at that. Close up of Donna Reed. Don't know what they've done with the lighting, but... It's like her fucking eyes are like fucking sparkling. It's fucking wonderful, man. You only tend to get this with these like older movies. The way that the lighting back then. Um, and it's probably uh, maybe an aspect of like shooting on black and white as well. You can maybe height, uh, light sort of gets heightened, doesn't it? It's more of a light and light and shade aspect at play yeah Mary she's certainly George's like her emotional cushion the hardships he's having to deal with within like day to day reality and then he gets to come back to this man gives him a fighting chance you know yeah, you, certain, you can't underestimate the power of old Mary Hatch throughout this movie, man. So these guys did their work. Drenched outside. Nice. So we're transitioning forward again. Not entirely sure again regarding timelines. So as I said, guys, in re regards to like where we're at in terms of like running time we're, we're nowhere close to like getting towards the really dark stuff so yeah it is what it is it's fine you know very much a slow build what the fuck are all these kids <laughs> it's a goat it's like a goat Goated, black and white goat. Oh yes, beautiful. So they finally leave in Bedford Falls. <laughs> so it's the Bailey Park. 
So what's going on here? Are they building new houses? Not entirely sure. Hee-haw, hot dog. Oh, Mary, you're such a giver in life. Your life can be very salty. So, we're to assume Bailey was... Oh, here's Potter. Potter's still at it, though. He's still ploying and a-planning. Yeah, the Bailey bark. Oh, is it a bit of fly in your ointments, Potter? Yeah, oh, they're spreading. Oh, Potter's not going to like that. I'm the only one who can spread. Ah, uh, Potter's plying. How do I fuck up this fucking shindig, baby? Potter's I need to fuck this up. Fuck the fucking babies. So what's chumpish about that, mate? The fact that they're willing to do it for the greater good and not they're not interested in making a quick buck for themselves. So who's this fucking expert that Potter's drafted in? Oh, he's had enough now, look. I have to turn the fucking tables. God, what's this woman wearing? She's got all the fucking jewels on. So his brother gave him the option to get out, but again, George has got there's too much going on in uh, Bedford. <laughs> I was going to say Bailey, Bailey Falls. Yeah, let's rename it Bailey Falls. Bedford Falls. Ehaw. So it's all looking good right now, building all of these houses, extending their uh, enterprise. But as I said, not uh, not doing it for them. So here we go, Potter. Look. Quite a cigar. Clearly, Potter's looking to recruit George Bailey. Look at the chair. He's almost, <coughs> almost deliberately lowers the chair. So he's not like, kind of like he's towering over him, isn't it? Oh, your sinister fucking laugh, Potter. Old man, yeah, he can't have long left. I mean, what are we clocking in at? You look about fucking 80, mate. <laughs> Big fucking celebrations when you pass away, Potter, you prick. You controlling fucking dickhead. Beating me. It's not about beating people, Potter. Get that. When is that going to fucking commute? Compute between your thick fucking skull, son. So he's 27. Don't fucking look 27. Mid 30s. <laughs> Ooh, he's oh, yeah, Potter. George should be stopping in it. You don't fucking know me, mate. He's a sly old dog, any he, Potter? He's... Uh, 
there's a side to like George's psyche which sort of feeds into this so Potter's kind of being a little bit sly and clever he, he realizes that oh you're the the son that wanted to get out you were thinking bigger and better yeah fuck it well you want me to run the fucking town into the ground for you and you you'll come and collect all of the fucking rewards so he's obviously going to pay him a lot of money 20,000 a year, which is obviously a hell of a lot back then, I've got to say. So initially, uh, George has fallen under Potter's spell. Yeah, look. Don't worry, George is going to gather himself. Oh yes, Potter, wink, wink. Come on, George. The, the cigar, it don't taste that good, mate. Look around. Look around at this sleazy fucking, this sleazeball and his sleazy fucking wealth. See it for what it is. So he wants him today. Fuck me, man. Needs to think about it. Can you imagine if he if he ran this past Mary? She'd go fucking ape shit. You go are you fucking kidding me, George? No fucking a chance of fucking hell. You're gonna work for that fucking dickhead. Look, here he he's like, ugh, it's the toad's fucking hands. Ugh, what's this? <laughs> it's f ugh, maggots. Use fucking Oh yeah. Are you coming to collect, you fucking toe fat twat? I don't want it, Potter. Show it up, your fucking ass. You sit around swimming in money. Well, tell him, George. Fuck him up. Yeah, you're nothing. You're a speck. Fucking cockroach. And you, up your ring piece. <laughs> Keeps the cigar. I like it. Yeah, you tell him, George. Gathered himself. So, Mary's asleep. Oh, it's playing on his mind. Yeah, nice. Oh, George, I know it's playing on your mind, mate, but at least you didn't say fucking yes, you know? Uh, it's still a thing, though, isn't it? He's like, I never got out. He feels like he's a failure, doesn't he? You know? You got the girl, mate. You got everything. You don't fucking realise. Oh. So Mary singing. God, imagine coming home to this every... This is just fucking... What a wonderful fucking wife, man. She's fucking next level. She's fucking glorious, man. All's good in the world, George. Coming home to this, mate. Ah, uh, he's starting to doubt himself. She don't want to be with anybody else, George. You know? Yeah, you do wonder if he's having these conversations with Mary. Because, obviously, there's a, lot of, there's a lot circulating in his mind right now. Obviously, Potter, the fact that he never got out of bed for falls, you know? Haha, <laughs> she's pregnant. Another reason for him to stay. Both. Oh, shit. So he never leaves. She had a baby. Fucking hell. They're at it. 
And she's done up the house. Look at this fucking... This is Mary's fucking... Oh, George comes home every night fucking depressed. Twat. <laughs> Potter's bearing down like a fucking shark. Look at him. Ah, uh, called it wrong. So, so I think the brother's... Is he going off to war now? Oh, I'll tell you, you're getting confused here. Potter's got a new fucking wheelchair, you. Yeah. Me? Shit. Funny. <laughs> nice footage of the war, all staged. It's kind of cool. Parachuted into France against a fake backdrop. Parachuting. Look, another fake backdrop. I'm not really here. <laughs> you yeah, man. Oh, that's real footage. Wow. Look at that shot there. Woo. George never left. Yeah, it's the Battle of Bedford Falls. The biggest fucking battle. It's a nice sort of montage passage of time. Yeah, all good. As I said, guys, we're coming up to about an hour and a half, man, and we're still not, we're not even close to, like, I see Clarence coming into play. Oh, it's today the day. So, boy, Harry Bailey wins Congressional Medal of Honor. It's a quite an accolade. Oh, this is his old uh, boss from when he was a boy. All grown up. Well, I mean, does he look any different? <laughs> He's barely fucking aged. So, Harry Bailey's coming home, celebrated. Yeah, I like it. So this Bedford Falls, I'm guessing this is like a Hollywood back lot, isn't it? That's kind of what I enjoy about this movie. I mean, it's all... Sh I mean, they would have done a lot of this back in the day, Hollywood style. A lot of it's shot on sets, wasn't it? You know? So what I enjoy about... Oh, look at this fucking twat sat down. The fact that... It's still like... It looks like it's still like all of the same people working at... Uh, Bedford Falls or building and alone. Oh, look at this guy. He's come to collect. He looks so fucking dodgy. He's one of fucking Potter's minions, isn't he? Slimy fucking sneaks. Uh, there's an ominous guy waiting in the wings. He wants to talk to you, George. So, this guy... Bank examiner, shit. Why does that sound bad? Guess it's a... Is it a yearly thing? Broke. Oh, yeah, mate. Family, mate. Are you telling me you've got a family? You fucking miserable twat. <laughs> Look at the money. Oh, he's going to misplace this money. And it's basically what's oh, keeping them just head, head above water, so to speak. Look, here we go. It's this interaction with Potter here. He fucks up. Poor is low these fucking Baileys. Bane of my fucking existence. Yeah, look, look, look at the package. So he's got the package, then it's left hand. He's holding the paper at the same time. Look, he's wrapped it up in the paper. 
Has he lost his fucking mind? Clumsy fucking clucks. Look, how the hell have you misplaced that, you prat? Oh, I'm going to make a deposit. Uh, what? <laughs> I had it in your left hand about five seconds ago, mate. Now where's it gone? Oh, shit. Fuck me. Now oh, Potter's got the package. Oh, Potter's like, oh, yeah. Oh, money. Money tastes so good. Shut the door. Someone's giving me their money for free. I'll get myself a new fucking wheelchair, baby. Oh, let's have a look. Oh, yeah, it's him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was his package, <laughs> Pratt. Bailey fucking hoodlum. Oh, we got him now. Lock my fucking door back up. Time to plan and ply. I got him. I got him now. Fucking hell, man. So it's awful because the, obviously the bank examiner's there and they haven't got the funds. So Violet's looking nice. Ah, squawky bird. Oh, this guy's beside himself, isn't he? So worried, you can see it. Everything's not fine. Shit, man. Yeah, this moment, don't half drive home true. I've got to say, man, oh, fuck me. It's very much the trigger, though. Look at George here, looking out for everyone. It's not as if George is swimming in money, but he's still looking out for her. He wants to see her fucking smash it in life. Ah, that's awesome. Yeah, we're getting so it's quite devastating. I mean, you could look at it right now. George Bailey's like the strongest mind character in Bedford Falls, and he's about to lose his way. It's um, it's fucking brutal. Look, he's lost the fucking close the fucking door. He's lost it. Shit. What George didn't realise, I mean, it's all good in, like, hindsight. They could have, there were other ways and means of raising their money, but... Yeah, this is going to trigger George big time. Look. I ain't got anything. Retracing his steps. Oh, fucking hell, man. The Potter is such a fucking bastard, isn't it? Look, he's looking on. He, he He's already realised. Oh, yeah, they lost their money. It's my money. You fucking animal. Yeah, George is getting aggressive here. Uncle Billy, where is it? I'm done for. Kind of like it. Uh, we're not getting a. We'll get a shot of um, Jimmy Stewart here, but how his hair's almost a little bit like dishevelled, you know? Downward spiral incoming. Jesus. Ah, fuck me. Yeah, the response is totally believable. So this guy's broken. Oh, no. Oh, fuck me. i got to brace myself now. Fuck. 
Fucking George is on the brink now. Comes very flippant here with his children, barely acknowledging his wife. Thing is, he doesn't let on. He doesn't. If he was to tell her right here, right now, that's a way out of this. Mary would have been like, "I can call some people." Look at him, man on the brink. Yeah, this is wonderful. Yeah, watch this, son. Hugging his child. Oh, he's on the move. Fuck me. I'm done, mate. Yeah, when Mary clocks this, watch her reaction. Fucking hell. Oh, yes. It decorate my hair. Shit, man. There he's thinking, okay. Oh, what? What party? No, you get in your fucking... Christmas is cancelled. Fuck it. Families, fuck off. <laughs> She's a tolerant type, isn't she, Mary? I mean, George, George is kicking off a treat here of his kids. Yeah, his response right now is just outrage and anger. <laughs> yeah, Mary's suspecting here. But again, she's so tolerant. She's not going to have it out with him. She may be just thinking, oh, it's George being George. He's had a tough day. It's fine. He'll settle down. He's got all the fucking food ready, mate. Yeah, she's looking at him going, hang on a minute. I'm sure you've had bad days before, but this is not... Yeah. Performances are wonderful. Yeah, she's asking him. What the fuck, man? Oh, he doesn't like the... It comes off every evening. Now he hates it. It's such a memorable moment because it's going to come back in later. Jesus, man. Yeah, Mary's suspecting. Fuck me, George. George, just get in bed with your little ones. Sleep on it, mate. Ooh. Yeah, we paced it back on. I'm so fucking... I'm on the brink. Yes, it. Pretend pasting. It's back on. You'll never know. Never know the difference, eh? You give him a little drink, yeah? It's a kind of nice series still. At least he's caring with this little one. He's done with the rest of them downstairs. So what triggers George in a minute is this fucking phone call, isn't it? I forget. Yeah, here we go. So he's calmed down a little bit. Obviously, Mary's going to take the call. Look. He's triggered. Look at him. He's looking to pick a fight. Oh, let me have a talk. You fucking idiot. Ah, oh, Mrs. Welsh. Never call back again, you prat. He's lost his fucking mind. Mary's trying to stop him. Fuck me, man. Oh, Jesus, man. Does it Mr. Welsh? Gets on the blower. (laughs) 
Oh yeah, is that Mr. Wells? Oh yes, son, that's a piece of you. Come round here. Oh, what a little bit, show. We'll fight, yeah? We'll fight it out. Christmas star, you prats. Get off me. <laughs> Difficult right now for Mary, because it's like, she's trying to reach him, but he's just getting, a, he's very aggressive, isn't he? Got the blinkers on. He can't hear any of it. He's in a fucking daze. Jesus. Reminded as well about this. His aspirations and dreams that were never realised. Or so... He... Fuck me, George. Jesus. Yeah, he's gone a little bit too far. Yeah, Mary's not going to be having this. This line coming up here. Is it? Oh, daddy. Oh. Mary's. Yeah, she's going to protective mode here. What are you doing to the fucking kids? Raising your voice like this. See, the way George is reading, he's like, oh, shit, my family's turned my back on. Oh, now he's like, just, oh, he's, fuck me, man. It's time to start praying for the guy. Mary's done the right thing, though. So just get out of the fucking house. You lost your fucking mind. Problem right now. Oh, now he's going to Potter. Oh, it's t now Potter is like... Oh, yes, we'll lower that chair, George. You look like a fucking snail. Potter's like, oh, yeah, now you come to me. Oh, I can't help you. Potter's like, I don't need you now, mate. Help. Oh, yeah, Yeah, if you uh, if you uh, needed any more confirmation regarding Mr. Potter's character, you get it here in a nutshell. Oh yes, <laughs> fuck off, Potter. You know where the money's sat. You won't say shit. Pretty incredible that, without hesitation, Mr. Potter is, is just happily taking the money. Does not fucking care. What a bastard. So we're just over at 1 hour 30, as I called it. it. Takes a while before we get to um, George on the brink, but it's kicking in now. Yeah, he's only willing to hire him when I uh, see, like, George in his prime, but now that he's got him, it's like, nah, I'll let you fucking fail. Wither away, you know? Yeah, Potter's been waiting for this moment, innit? End the Baileys. End the building and loan. Collect everything for himself.
See, what Potter's just said to him there is completely wrong. The people would be willing to help George, but he's going to have to go through all of this first. It's only when he comes back and Clarence shows him what he could have done, you know? Fucking getting ominous with the snow. So is George? Is he just stealing a car here? What's he fucking doing? Oh, shit, here we go. Another a memorable sequence here. Or memorable moment. Yeah. George is not a religious man, but he's going to start praying. This is a fabulous moment. One of the great acting moments in cinema. Watch this from Jimmy Stewart. Fabulous, fabulous acting. Fantastic, man. Obviously not fantastic for George Bailey, but just the acting is unbelievable. It's Oscar worthy, isn't it? Oh, shit. It's like one thing after another. When you're down, you're down in life. It's just totally believable, though. When you're having a bad day, it's like everything's coming at you from all angles. So this is the guy on the phone. Problem is, it's like George, whilst he's he's in this bar, but I mean, none of these people can really help him right now because they don't realise where he's at mentally. Yeah, kind of interesting. Yeah, George is like, it's like, oh, I just prayed and now I get a fucking bloodied lip. Well, I won't be praying again. Jesus, man. Drunk driving, Bedford Falls style. Fuck me, I'm trashed. Snowed, oh, fuck you now. Where are we to now? Who's this? Door won't shut. Oh, don't worry, mate. The trees fuck off. Yeah. Fuck you. No, I'm never coming back. I'm done. You can move the car. Oh, we're moving towards the bridge. George is on the brink. Oh, yeah, mate. Oh, Merry Christmas. Oh, fuck you, this. Time for a swim. It's minus 40, time for a swim. So finally, Clarence is coming in pretty soon. Wow, oh, man. It's really... Okay. Yeah, he was going to go through with it. It's not this Clarence looking on. Seems pretty happy. <laughs> <laughs> witnessing a guy about to commit suicide and Clarence is smiling. He throws himself in, doesn't he? Ha 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 ha. Clarence is like, I'm a fucking angel. I've got central heat in. I, I'm not cold. Okay, now George is straight in there. It's a nice sort of like savouring manoeuvre in it by Clarence. So I'll throw myself in. I'll stop George. He'll jump in. And then I said, get out of the water. Hot drink. And we can talk it out. This guy looking on. It's hilarious. Oh, are you wearing Clarence? Oh, what the fuck? Yeah. 
So, actor playing Clarence. Very memorable. It's old Henry Travers. Yes, a beautiful cameo. This guy's great in the background here. Tom Sawyer. What? God, this liquor's hard, lads. What's this guy on about? <laughs> Against the law, is it? Uh, what? <laughs> Heaven? What the fuck, man? <laughs> uh, you been popping pills, mate? What's all this sucking heaven talk? Yeah, best thing right now. Get George sobered up, warmed up. Oh, he knows everything. So it's quite interesting. So... Clarence has been given his entire life up until this moment. Okay. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> Second class. Fuck me, man. I'm out of fucking hell, son. <laughs> this guy's great in the background. He's fucking wonderful. I saw he's going to get his wings, isn't it? It's easy enough to say that in hindsight, but when you're, I guess, when you're George Bailey, caught up in the, uh, the moment, the emotions running high, you know, you've got the blinkers on. Yeah, of course suicide is a possibility, you know. Thing is, though, right now, George is still adamant that he's going to go through with it, you know? So these initial words by Clarence ain't, ain't doing shit, you know? Just like George is like some quirky guy who jumped in the water. What's he talking about? He's, he's a second class angel. We're going to get his fucking wing. Yeah, right, mate, right. Yeah, we're about to get an absolutely, probably my favourite sequence or sequences in this movie. I.e. Clarence is going to show George life, i.e. if George had like never existed, i.e. just the effect he had on other people, you know, because he doesn't realise right now that he had a big effect on people. Here we go. Clarence is like, yeah, that's quite an interesting ploy. So Clarence has gone through of it. Oh, and look, I love it how the wind... It's gone all fuck. It's all windy outside. So this is unreal now. Now we're going to see. Yeah, you're going to see now. They're going to like have a little wander around bed for falls now. Get to see all of the key characters and i.e. how their lives panned out. Obviously with no 
George Bailey around. So I forget this, it's been a while. I'm assuming Potter's obviously taken over, isn't it? Because obviously George Bailey's not around to stop him. So Potter would have uh, collected everything, fucked up the town. Let's have a look. Yeah, so they're immediately saying, so on the tree, I, I drove into it. No, mate, it never happens. I like this guy who goes out. You've been fucking drinking, mate. Oh, look, look, look. Oh, yeah, mate. Fuck your shit. What is Phil? <laughs> Biff Tannen's taking over, baby. It's Pottersville. Time to crank up the fucking sleaze, baby. It's Potter's fucking party. You want to see a true nightmare, George? It's about to play out here, son. Gabriel. <laughs> yeah, look how sleazy now the this bar area is. One, it's overly popular. There's more people. You know, everyone looks... It just looks grubby now, doesn't it? Compared to, like, what, 10 minutes ago when George was in here praying. Yeah, it's got a kind of, like... Yeah, everything's very dark and shady. Dangerous. Everything's going to become dangerous the moment Potter takes over, you know? God, aren't you a civilised fucking barman? Oh, yeah. Clarence, mate, you're fucking everything up, son. Oh, why is everybody needing to get drunk fast, man? Is it so devastating living around here with Potter in charge? It obviously is. Look, he's muscle bound. There's only one drink. The hardest fucking liquor, baby. That's the said, he's a completely different person now that you're not around, George. Sleep? He doesn't sleep. He's next level. He's a fucking angel, George. Oh, that line's going to kick back in pretty soon. Angels just got their wings. It's the sound of bells. I think this barman's had enough, isn't he? They're about to get, not escorted out, kicked out. George is like, I never fucking existed, mate. If I had, you'd be in a better mental state. You'd be so fucking aggressive. Look. Out you go. Well, if I'd existed, mate, you wouldn't be shouting at me, right? Oh, fuck me. Get me back in line, Clarence. Oh, look, it's this old boss. He's an absolute drunk. So, this is obviously his boss. So, yeah, obviously, uh, he's basically, as, oh, he's now just the butt of all jokes. This is horrifying, this moment, I've got to say. 
Yeah, so Mr. G- oh, Bay George, you were never around to have that conversation, you know? Because that moment, obviously when he's slapping the shit out of George, it's pretty full on, but it obviously helped Gower become a better person or just have that moment in life, you know? Ah, 20 years in jail, of course, yeah. George was not around, so obviously say it was an accident, blah, 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 and obviously the guy did time. I completely... Ha <laughs> ha. So it's all pretty dark right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's the... He was about to put the poison... Yeah, 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 okay, okay, I'm with you. Nick's hot. It's not Martini, it's Nick's. Mafia joint. Fuck me, is this some dark fucking fairy tale fable nightmare? Wings. Angel guy, are you playing tricks in my mind? Who are you? You, uh, you seem to be real. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you never existed, mate. You're no one. Yeah, this is so good, I gotta say. It really takes the film up a few notches to have all of this uh, fantastical like subplot. It's pretty far-reaching in terms of like ideas and that. It's only in regards to like George Bailey's journey throughout. So again, George, he's still got the, he's still aggressive, right? He's like, I need to get away from this guy. Making me see shit. Clance is like, well, you're just gonna have to see it for yourself. <laughs> so Pottersville. Fucking hell, so fucking sleazy now, isn't it? No left turns. Police sirens everywhere. It's all like bars. It's all very sleazy, isn't it? Biff Tannen style, dancing, naked dancing, drink yourself stupid, cocktails. Fuck me. Pawnbroker. It's all about excess and wasting money as a Sir Potter's come to collect everyone. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, it's just a complete hellhole. Building and loan? It's a fucking strip joint, mate. <laughs> oh, it's old Violet. She's a fucking tear away. So is Violet any different? I mean, she was pretty much like this anyway. So uh, this is George Ed Little effect. And Violet's just a fucking same. The biggest one, obviously, when we get to her in a second, old Mary. That's the biggest fucking difference, i.e. with George not being around. You see who Mary's become. Fuck me, man. (laughs) You've been fucking my wife. Everybody's so fucking dangerous, aren't they, in old Pottersville? Is it survival of the fittest? Or is it just everyone out for themselves, isn't it? Murder's fucking rampant. <laughs> you got a mad one in the back, okay. <laughs> Ha 
Yeah, George is going to be spending the night in a fucking jail cell if he continues down this fucking avenue. Completely discarded, never refurbed, just a desolate building. Fucking hell, George. It's pretty fucking dark right now, I gotta say. Hey, see, it feels so fucking dark. Is he seeing like. George, uh, well, he's not even aware right now. Like, uh, what's, what's this? It's just some fucking dark nightmare. How do you know my name, mate? Continues down this road. He's, as I said, they're going to cuff his fucking ass. Clarence is going to step in there. <laughs> Angels? How much fucking scotch you be? Oh, yes, Clarence. Fuck him up, baby. He's just going to disappear here. Yeah? <laughs> okay, now, man. Just let them fucking leave, yes. Let them go off and do their fucking madness. We don't want to be a part of it. Oh, shit. Where to now? Samar Bailey boarding house. God, look at his mother, man. She looks fucking sinister. Look at her. Mother. Oh, fuck. There's no vacancy at the Bates Motel, baby. Yeah. James Stewart's fucking selling this so well, isn't he? Just that uh, look of disbelief. On his face. Great shot, yeah. Right at the camera. Fucking wonderful, isn't it? Looking right into the lens. Yeah. So true what Clarence is saying. That's something I don't really realise. Maybe the impact I'm having on other people's lives sometimes, yeah. Yeah, there are okay. Not that I've ended up in as dark a place as George Bailey, but there are days where I'm like, oh, I really. What effect am I fucking have? You feel like you're just you're getting nowhere in life, you know? Does it really matter if I'm about, you know? So his brother perished, didn't he? Harry Bailey drowned. Yeah, you weren't around, George, to save him. No, he fucking didn't, mate. Fucking hell. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. Yeah, you weren't there to save him. Harry doesn't live his life and saves others. It's a high fucking... It's a higher body count, George, when you weren't about, mate. Oh, God, man. Here comes Mary. Mary? Mary don't fucking speak anymore. It's an old mate. She's never married. She's very much a, uh, a librarian, isn't she? No, good... Pottersville Public Library. Here's Mary. Look, she didn't marry. 
Uh, she don't speak. She's never been with a man. Look. Oh, maybe she are. I don't fucking know. She's she's got flying solo in life. She don't talk to... Look. George, like, what the fuck? Mary, it used to be life and soul of the fucking party. Fuck me, how do you not know me, bitch? You know me, this is me, George. Love, tell me. You see my face, bitch. Oh, fuck me, son. <laughs> Come back here, Mary. Fucking hell, man. This is a hideous fucking nightmare. Fucking hell, man. It's like he's surrounded by them. None of them can recognise him. Oh, Mary's fainted. Oh, George is... He's seen enough now. Clarence, man, take me back. Yeah, finally, the penny's dropped. Oh, shit. Go, slug, go make a run for it, George. Run. Are oh, they going to take the shot? Pop pistols. This is just a normal night in fucking Pottersville. Gunfire's no different, you know? That's why no one, no one's bothered. Shots are being fired. Normal fucking night, innit? Take me back. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, he's like, I'll face the hardships. It's, I can't, I can't be having the world like this. Yeah, it's awesome, man. It's nice, because this is like the second time he's praying. And now... His words are being answered. Here we go. So straight away, help. Incoming. Oh, yes, George. You're back in the game, son. Yeah, it's quite an important message. If you if you can ride it out, let it play out, there's always help, you know? George is loving him. He loves it. Oh, my bloody mouth. I fucking love it. Ha, ha, ha. So now we're going to get hysterical George Bailey. It's fucking beautiful. Iconic shot of him running down at... Not Pot it's not no longer Potter's Bedford Falls. It's not Pottersville. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, Merry Christmas, everybody. I exist. I exist again. You know me. Oh, yeah. So it's not so sleazy now. Bit more of a balance to a lot of these buildings. Yeah. Bailey Bros Association. Potter ain't gonna like this. I thought I cracked this. I thought. Yeah, Potter's like, I thought he ended you, so you seem a little bit happy. So this guy wants his payment. So it's not over. <laughs> so still pretty precarious right now. Oh, this is a nice moment with the stairs. Here we go. Oh, he loves it. Look, everything's broken. He loves it. Oh, yes. Kids are probably happy. Daddy seems himself. A little bit hysterical, but better than him fucking shouting. Zuzu? So here's Mary. Mary's wonderful, man. It's like just a sea of positivity, even within like moments of hardship, you know? Yeah. 
You think Mary's not up for the fight? She's been doing her fucking work. Look at this, man. Talk about bringing in the fucking cavalry. Christmas is about to get very good for you, George Bailey. It's a miracle. Everybody's come to help George Bailey. Yeah, they've raised the funds with ease, you know. Look at this, man. Clap, clap, clap. I'm loving this. See, this is what George didn't realise. He, he'd impacted so many people. And once the word got out that he'd fallen on hard times, people were like, right, I'm going to help my friend, Mr. Bailey. You know, look at the amount of money, man. They've raised it and some. Oh, Clarence, baby, you're going to be getting your wings, son. Is that Mr. Gower? Fucking hell. Beautiful. Oh, it's Violet. Not much different. She's just the same as she was in Pottersville. <laughs> Is that the maid? Oh, fucking yeah, love. It's a miracle. Donna Reed is so good right now. So is this... So this is his brother. Wow. So he almost, he become even richer. The fact that they obviously the money, Potter got the money and now he, Bailey's got more money because that happened and he come back. Ah, oh, oh, wonderful ending. <laughs> Glory to a new donkey. Oh, even this guy's willing to chip in. Yeah. He's not such a bad old soul. The only one missing here is Mr. Potter, but we know what he's about. Ah, oh, so brother's back. Beautiful. God, so even his brother was willing to come back. Fuck me, man. Fucking Mary, man. Yeah. I'll be drinking to that, baby. So Tom Sawyer. Oh yeah, Clarence. Remember, no man is a failure as friends. I love Clarence. Beautiful. He's got his wings. Yeah, the boy. Fucking out. I'm not teary eyed, guys. I'm on the fucking brink. What a masterpiece. Unbelievable. I don't get much, but at the end, oh, an absolute Christmas classic. Yeah, I loved it, guys. It's fucking wonderful, isn't it? Excuse the pun. It's a wonderful life. 
Yeah, the Donna Reed, shout out to her. She's fucking great as Mary. Jimmy Stewart, memorable. They're all brilliant. All the actors involved. Yes, yeah, wonderful. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Guys, so that's the culmination of my Christmas commentaries for this year. Good to like end it on um, Potter's bodyguard, Frank Hagney. <laughs> yeah, good to end it on a It's a Wonderful Life. Is that it? Yeah, that's it, guys. So anyone still listening, if you've enjoyed the commentary, thanks for tuning in. Give me some feedback. And I'll see you again soon for the new year, covering plenty of movies, different genres. So if inclined, yeah, do check out my content. Bye now.